Hello, Master Zeon here with another Blender tutorial. Now in this video, it's not going to be sped up. I'm just going to real time work with this. So I have over in the left window a clean blend file. I'm just going to remove everything, turn on screencast keys, um, disable operator, and in this file, I just download it off of blend swap, and it's just to meshes so I'm just going to copy one of these since it's already rigged and it's a base mesh it's pretty simple and I like it so now that I have it over in blender I mean now that I have it over in this window let's go ahead and begin so I'm not going to go over you know how to rig a person I could do that in another video but just know that this thing has a simple IK rig. You know, you probably get a better result with Rigify since you're able to switch between FK and IK. And working primarily in IK is kind of bad practice. If you spend a bit of time animating, you become a, pretty acquainted with this pitfalls pretty fast. But as you can see, just a nice little base mesh. So someone was asking me in the comments on a video about cats, about how to do clothes. So we're just going to create a set of clothes for this character. As far as weight painting goes and this armature modifier, I don't really care too much about it, but I'm just going to leave it there. The first thing we're going to make is a pair of pants. Um, hide. 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 And I'll just use L to select and then Alt H. Control plus to grow. Duplicate P separate. So now I have this mesh and it's derived from the mesh that I already have. So there's already weight painting on it. You know, if I go in and actually hide this mesh. Sorry, I actually did not rehearse at all, but I don't think it's necessary. The hell are all these parts? Move this to layer one. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mine has been a little weird lately. All right. So if we look at the white painting for this, and just go down to um, Let's see the thighs. So as you can see, there's already painting applied for it, but it doesn't matter because we could repaint this as necessary. But that's one of the reasons that it's easier to just cut the clothes off of the mesh. So to make these pants, we'll just look up some references. I mean, this is a good reference, but facing the wrong direction. We'll just use this and just take a quick look. And I'm not too worried about the topology for this. For tutorial purposes, I'm just going to keep it loose. But as you'll see, I'll still be able to get the results I want. So I'm just creating some bevels for the loops. kind of weird uh, narrating at the same time that I'm doing it. I keep thinking I should just work using my good old friend control B tool of the air now I'll give my belt loops I'll just rip this pull it out uh, is there a mirror modifier on or a shape key Okay, so X mirror is on. And so with that, it won't let me actually move it. But X mirror wasn't helping when I was beveling it either. Uh, 
Ah, that's a horrible look for belt loops. I'd be better off just extruding them out. Like I said, not making, you know, realistic denim, just a quick outfit for this low poly character. Alright, that will have to do. So it needs pockets. Pockets are important. Alright. So I have this loop here. If I control B bevel. Now keep in mind in a normal situation I would just come back and make all this stuff quads and fit it up. But it, I find it a lot easier to just get the shape first. And at least then see how I feel about it. Because you know modeling can be a consuming process. I spend a lot of time making something. I hate it. I spend hours on stuff. Post online, hated. And I agree, you know, it has its reasons, but my eye gets lazy. Double verts here. I hate it when that happens. Let's see, where's this end at? It just ends up there somewhere. Alright. Edge loops like this, suck that in, just put a loop here, and there we go, we got that. So now for these little side pockets, the easiest way to do that would be to just select these three, take this, extrude it inward, nope, this is possibly a bad idea. Alright, that'll do for that. Like I said, the goal is to get to look like pants with bear, if you're wearing bear goggles. And we'll take this loop, extra it in. Normally I'd apply a solidify, but I have my reasons for not doing that anymore. Turn on snapping with control shift tab, jump over to vertex. Notice that the magnet isn't on. So that means that if I hold control, it'll begin snapping. So if I extrude, hold control, bam, snapped it there. Remove doubles, which is overkill, just need to remove one. Found an extra one to remove. Now we come down in here. And we extrude to here. Remove doubles, remove vert. But you know, those are some alright pads. These are going to be some high waters, aren't they? But still some attractive pants. Let's see how they... Alright, that part looks like it'll work in the knees. Alright, right here I want an extra cut. So... Like I said in my other video, with the knife you can press Z and it'll actually cut completely through the mesh. Call it the Holy Sword. Alright, so let's see, right here, I'm going to feed, rip it, fill these, press period to get my selection back on focus. Pull 
this in. Let's hit smooth. Maybe that'll get it to look right. Nope, I think there's a double in there. If not, something's not looking right. Let's just delete the face. Sorry if I'm mumbling incoherently. Just kind of thinking out loud. You know, this ain't worth explaining. It's just good old classic modeling. We'll slide them this way to harden that edge. Uh, we'll do it to the other side too. GG, move them over. Alright. I don't even think that's in the right place. In fact, use O to proportional editing tool, roll down the fall off. And move it about to where you think it would be. We'll snap our cursor there. Add a 12 digit circle, align to view. Uh, let's see if I make this meet this, then I can have to roll it across. Select these four to extrude in and delete. That'll be a satisfactory button. I guess um, thread, thread or something will do. So we'll drop in a Bezier curve, scale that thing down. And if I press the control shift tab, I can change my snap in the face. And all I'm going to do is snap one in here, one in here. Not in the hole, but on the rim. If I just put my 3D cursor out in space somewhere, drop in a um, Bezier circle, make it face me and scale it down to where I can see it, then on this object I can make this the um, Bezier circle, and I could either scale this circle and that will make the little threads in there bigger, showing me how bad they're intersecting. So I'll just pull that on top, call that day. And for this thing, I'll just lower down the preview resolution. And that'll be it. Alright, so. I see that this could have an extra cut added. Like I said, just going for alert, topology is bad, whatever. Still some decent pants, but if we're going to do this, might as well do the full job. And as you can guess, I'll just select these edges here, bevel it, pull them out, and then I'll use the knife tool, cut in between the pockets, hold down control for absolute snapping.
probably a better way I could have uh, went about that. But I think it needs more geometry. Alright, these start to look like some strange pockets. Alright, so that's that. So we'll unhide the body. Now the thing is, is with the body, if I go into edit mode, I will select the geometry that I used to make the pants again. And after choosing that geometry, I'll go in face mode, hide it, it still looks okay. Uh, unhide it. We'll keep this area. We'll keep this area. And if I control G, assign the group, we'll call this group hide. And if I go over here, add a mask modifier, change this to B hide, invert it. Now I have a model wearing pants. You know, and there's no penetration. And the thing is, is that, you know, there's actually no mesh visible underneath. And the reason that it doesn't have to be visible is because if my character is doing something, he's not going to be taking off his pants. So, that's the reason why I went that route. And then we'll just give it some default material. Just blue it out. Change this to normal, hit the little F. No specularity on pants. Change this to add. And let's see, there's not even a camera in the scene. We'll just add one. And we'll start off simple with the lights. So we'll start off with a Hemi, 0.2. All right, and so that's basically what we're starting out with. But keep in mind that it's already rigged. I just made these pants. I could go the same route. The geometry is not deleted and still enough of it is showing but actually enough of it isn't showing in fact I need to vertex parent this to the pants and so the first thing is to take it local mode and just focus on this thing button make it red Hard spec, a little high. Usually I give everything an internal, this little rim glow now, it just kind of helps it. Oh, yes, and the threads. Make a new material, threads. Just make it some light brown. You can't even see it in the render hardly. And so that's colored. So if I take this, select the pants with that also selected, I select one, two, three, and choose Control P to make vertex apparent. And now the bones are rigged to that button. I mean, the rig. The, the button is parented to those vertices, so anywhere that they move, you have that additional level of control. So the next thing, I guess, is a shirt. 
So I don't need this rig anymore. We'll just put on layer two. And what kind of shirt should we give them? Maybe a variety of shirts. We'll start off with just your classic long short sleeve. I mean. So as usual, I'll just hide it, region, and then just select it with L, unhide it, duplicate it, P to separate it, now I'll look at it. So the first thing I want to do is make it bigger than the underlying surface. So I'll Alt S, hold shift, scale it up, and that's that. And this will be just a... put a loop there for good measure you know the neck also could use a loop but not too thick of one maybe like that would be good enough in here hit it with a bevel and scale it in just a little bit on normal maybe add another bevel to make it just have a appearance to it. If we come back and look at the character, you know, his underlying body is showing. So if I just select ever so slightly, this region, Maybe use the circle select and undo that part. We will just add it to this group. So if we assign it when we come out, that's what happens. So we made a mistake. And that is that if we hit select, this is our group that we're hiding. So we need to select this ring. And the adjacent ring and remove that and that's what's exposed now of his body that's left and he of course needs a subserve and now it's just some cosmetic tweaking of the sleeves so we do see that they're a little skinny and the arms are penetrating so just flaring them up will give it that Brady Punch look. Oh yeah, rigs on layer two. So just hold shift and press two. And now I got this. So I'm already I'm already dressed. My guy is no longer <laughs> naked, but he's boring. It's boring clothes. You know, anybody can make a t-shirt. I mean, y'all just saw me make one in like two seconds. So get rid of the t-shirt. And we're going to make a hoodie. And a hoodie actually would require the use of cloth physics. So I think it will be a good exercise here. So I'm just hiding. Always just hiding what I want to take. Alt-H. Shift-D to separate now I have now I have a problem I have this man M03 probably right here I need to remove that I also need to remove the mass modifier Why is it not showing it? There we go. That might have been an error on my part. So this doesn't look like a hoodie. It looks more like a turtleneck. 
So I haven't even done any weight painting. Weight painting is one of those things that I used to dread. I still not a big fan of it, but you know it's really not so bad. Make one of those hoodies like um, Kingdom Hearts style. Alright, so some doubles need to be removed. And that gets some acting better. Now I extrude it out. And why is there still geometry sticking? Is auto merge on? No, so I'm not gonna let Blender take me out of making a hoodie again. I already made a video about this before. Alright, so if you're wondering how to make a Lelouch of the Rebellion style, there you go. Bam F2, bam F2, bam F2. Blender sure has come a long ways. Why did this loop not come all the way around? I think that's a pretty all right look. So if I have that, and then I'm gonna need to get rid of the mask or make adjustments to the mask actually. So if we look at the mask, it's actually a weight group and that's our weight group. Now the cool thing about weight groups now is you can actually press numpad zero which should have taken me to subtract and you can actually hold alt and draw a gradient drawing weight groups but I mean it's way more accurate to just do this and just be like uh, remove object mode and turn the mask back on and voila no more penetration Except this part needs to flare out. Not too much. I do want to show that I'll put work in the pants. And of 
course, a little Alt-S to get it off of the surface, especially in a situation like this where it's actually going to be colliding with the mesh. But, I mean, we can still always hide, you know, this part, this part, and that part, have it only colliding in areas it needs to, and then just use white painting to do the rest of the work. Extrude it back. And since I work the edge flow a certain way, I have this benefit to just try to improve the look. It does improve it. In fact, this one needs to slide away. This one could use some sliding in. This could actually use some scaling out. Still need to hit set smooth. And there we go. Made a hoodie. So, let's go ahead and take care of the rigging. So, shift H, hide everything. It's just me and this rig. Except this rig has a bunch of special bones set up. But on other layers, this is the layer we're actually looking at here. In weight paint mode, you can press W and choose automatic assign from bones, and that'll reassign your weight paint based off of your bone heat in case you've been modeling like I have. Let's see. Like right here, this is another opportunity to do automatic from bones. And here, automatic from bones. And then if I don't think the influence is enough, then that's when I press 1 and switch to add, and I just draw gradients. And these gradients are just great. That's how you get the nice fall off with the, you know, the rig. So, I mean, if we take this rig and move it around, it's looking pretty good, except for the head. The head's looking bad. Why does the head look bad? Rick does not have a head bone. The jaw, the lips, the cheeks, the neck, torso. Here's the head. Silly me. Alright, my apologies. So we select the head bone, and we choose automatic from bones. And with that, rigging has checkmated. And I could say that I'm done. I mean, finer weight painting could be necessary, but just know that the simpler you keep your verts, easier weight painting can be. But once you start applying levels of subdiv, forget about it, you know. But just using automatic weights, I was able to get this to not look too bad. And the character is able to turn her head. So the next thing is, you know, cloth simulation. How long have I been talking? 34 minutes. I think I have viewport render mode for default now. I don't know if y'all ever messed with it, but <laughs> viewport render mode is pretty sweet. Kinda. It's a little strange, but, you know, we'll come back to that. So this shirt, it can go to layer 3. That's part of a different outfit. This hoodie, we're going to make it... Make it green. And, of course, add a normal shader. No spec. And so if I look at it in the render, this is what I got. You know, I don't like the texture on the actual model that we're borrowing here. 
so we'll just give it a new material, no specularity. When in doubt, just turn that dango specularity off. And for the skin, we'll just add in a little bit of red to twinge the edges on the normal. Lower it, and here we go. But, you know, having a character stand in the middle of nowhere is horrible. So we'll put a plane. And under the shadow settings, if you click shadows only, and scale it out, hide it, now you have a shadow, but you need a light to cast shadow. So my lighting solution for internal is start off with a sun to just indicate rim light and give a nice area shadow. And then use area lights to add more complexity to the shadows. So if we just twinge that a little yellow. I'm not going for a fantastic render, but you know what I was looking at a minute ago was not very pleasing to look at. sky will change this to like deep blue much more pleasant to look at the hoodie should be a little pointier like a clan's hoodie you know there we go get out of this boring t post so here we go penetration ba bow why is that happening? Should we hide more of the arm? That's the first answer. Let's see what's actually exposed and what doesn't have to be exposed. That's important, that's important. So we'll say these two are important. would say all the way to there is not important anymore so we can hide it dare I go a step further and hide that too yes so now the question is why is there penetration happening I mean, you can fight the meshes and get them to coexist and transfer weight paints, but easiest thing is to just hide it. And then the other is to make more scaling modifications to loosen the clothing from the mesh. Because chances are, is that'll take care of it but I mean you could fight the weight paints all you want or you can just do a little weight paint manipulation but I don't like the way the shoulders deforming now or actually I guess that'll work like hey my sleeves are too short tell me you notice and I do so we'll definitely have to extend those sleeves Looks like a 
That looks much nicer. Except the feet are oriented strange. They're more like, hey. And you see a problem. It's showing no leg. And if we select the hide group, we see why. These need to be removed. And then you have to flare these legs out. Be careful though, because you don't want to make them into flares. And too late, I already did it. Brady Bunch in all the way. Shift B, draw a border around our selection. Maybe about that much. Even check crop and that'll crop the image to it to fit those dimensions, so voila. Now for some cloth physics. So the way cloth physics go is you don't want to apply it on the, or at least my rules for it is you don't want to apply it on the entire mesh. You want to put it on just some subtle parts to be just secondary animation. And we'll grow it by one and make this actually we have to choose the invert with control I and change this to assign a new group and we'll change it to non-cloth So whenever it comes to simulating cloth and blender, you know, you can go about it quite a few different ways. I prefer to keep it simple. So if you keep your cloth above your subsurf, then it won't take your subsurf into account to do your cloth, thus making it work a lot faster in a viewport, like so. And now, We have to set a collision on the body. Oh no. Let's look at this non-cloth group. Or on this one, let's look at the non-cloth group. And if we change this to, well, actually, there's no lenience we can apply to this. And we'll move the collision up above the mask. Now we have a bit of a blowout, but at least now it's not going to just fall through the mesh. And this has to do with some of the collision parameters. As you can see now I'm able to pose, move the character, and by controlling exactly how much masking is occurring, I'm able to 
you know, simulate cloth and it not look too bad. But let's make them animate, because the only real way to do it is to bake it. So we'll just do a post to post quick animation. Double tap R, rotate. So when it comes to the simulating and the cloth, you have to really make it make it work for your animation. So you can't just drop a simulation on it and then expect absolute freedom. Like you do have to put in a little bit of effort into getting your animation almost finalized before you start tuning the cloth settings, unless you already have a pretty versatile solution. But that probably doesn't even make sense. So back to posting. We'll do it the brutal, horrible, bad way. I'll just choose lock rot scale and just press I. Alright, so that's set. And if we go to layer 20. We'll just go back to default pose. Just the end frame to be there. And if we look at this, ooh, penetration. Now, why is that penetration happening? It's because we did not give it any rest time. So that is very crucial. But so is baking. So. Set the bake to 20 frames. Let's see what we got here. Would that work for an animation? The answer is no. It would not. So, back to the old drawing board. Back to the collision body. What do we got here? We got the armature with the collision, with the mass, with the subsurf. Should we put the subsurf above the collision? Then it would take longer to simulate, so no. Alright, so as far as the cloth goes, cloth collision, distance, we want to divide that by two, maybe make the quality a little higher. And for the cloth presets, we'll change it to cotton. I have a feeling it might have been silking, or being silk. And then for the stiffness, we'll change that to 30. We don't need it to be as silky. We want it to higher equals less smaller, but more big wrinkles. All right, we'll change this to 0.7. Mass, um, 0.5. And if we just bake with these settings,
Boy, that cloth baking can sure jump up there if you turn up that quality setting on anything. I mean, look at it bake. I should probably pause the video, but it's already at 47%. Baking's done. So I don't like the way this result's coming out. I read this video in with the cloth not penetrating this dang old hand. So we look and it happens right there. So what can I do? Can I tune the cloth? Can I just hide that part of his arm? You know? I'm going to try hiding it first. And I'm going to unhide that. That was not a good idea. So I can't take a shortcut here. My only choice is to examine the rigging. And I'm just going to hit this button and this button. So that way... edit mode select just this area and then when I go on weight paint mode I can select face mode and be dealing with only this area all right so that comes to the next p potential solution corrective shape keys corrective shape keys and fabric I don't know how well that would go together, but here's to try. So we'll scale that up. Well, first, we'll add a shape key for basis, and then a key one. Scale that up. I still think this thing needs to be off the surface just a little bit more. Except it looks so off the surface right here. So we're still going to have that penetrating issue. And I think it is because the subsurf needs to be above the collision. So like I always say, your modifier order is important for ensuring that everything uh, meshes correctly. So now that I've done this, it's definitely going to increase my bake times. So I'll see you in a moment. Alright, so bake time's over. Now as you can see, I could not hide the underlying mesh because it would reveal to it would reveal that there's no mesh underneath as my shortcut for stopping penetration, but by putting the subsurf above the collision, now it'll actually take a better account of the mesh whenever it's bending. So that's pretty much all there is to it as far as rigging cloth. I mean, there's plenty of shortcuts um, that you can take towards it, but one of them that you see me use is definitely taking the components for the cloth from the mesh itself and then using those existing weight groups to just go along with it. And then by putting just a little bit of cloth physics on just certain areas, I'm able to give it that look without having it go crazy with simulation time. Because keep in mind that all cloth sims, if you have a character that's walking through a scene, you're going to have to bake that entire thing. And it's going to take forever. And to have it non-penetrating through its automatic systems, it's going to take up a whole lot of memory because it's going to have to have self-collision and a mesh collision with the subdivision. So sometimes it's easier to just have a phone do it or just use shape keys that alternate back and forth. But that'll do it.
that's 50 minutes with Master Xeon, and thank you for watching, and happy blundering.